All right, welcome to Democracy News Live broadcasts. We are discussing today on why the Indian tail end team does not perform as well as the UK team. And let's get to the bottom of it. We are talking to Rohit at Crickstasy in partnership with DNL. Rohit, what is the challenge? Why can't the Indian tail end perform as well as the English? No, oh, it is a bit tricky because even the Indian top order has been floundering. So. Um England has very familiar conditions at home and uh, like the Sam Curran and Joe's Butler, Ben Stokes, they have a lineup packed with lower order batsmen and even Prakat says is that they have relied on their lower order for runs in recent times and um, India on the other hand are top heavy with Virat Kohli, the sole biggest run scorer on the side for the past few couple of years and um, their tail, like despite having Ravi Chandra Nashwin and Khadik Pandya has not performed the potential. Yesterday we saw Rishabh Pant take the attack to the opposition and that worked. So probably um, the Indian tail were just a bit circumspect against the English bowling and they should probably stick to their national game and go attack, which worked really well for them. So, you know, the very uh, way it's structured, it's mostly the first five, six batsmen who perform really well. And this has been, you know, historically been the case. The tail end usually is made up of the bowlers, sometimes the wicket keepers. Sometimes even the wicket keepers come right up front a lot of times. So just to understand why and how is the English able to achieve, you know, the tail enders performing? Because the top order is supposed to perform. You put your best batsman up front. Absolutely, but uh, there is a difference because uh, the conditions are aligned in favour of uh, polling in English conditions uh, at the start of the innings and um, none of the, like both the teams have struggled with their top order scoring runs except for a handful like uh, Kohli or um, Jorut, but uh, the others have just not chipped in and uh, in these situations it is vital that um, the length of, I mean, uh, the lower order chips in with some runs that it not at least resist uh, the uh, flow of wickets at least a bit. So um, that has been missing in the Indian lineup. The England lower order has faced almost double the number of balls that Indian uh, tail has faced, and this has contributed to uh, a great deal to a series loss because it's a game of fine margins and um, uh, the four-one score line does not really, I mean, does not really justify um, in just performance in the series. Uh, just practice and time spent on pitch, also their experience uh, certainly has contributed. But a lot of times it's been talked about, you know, the Indian batsmen are not really practicing on, on, on these pitches overseas, whether it's Australia, whether it's England. And, and that is one of the challenges as well. How can that over challenge be overcome? See, um, many of the players were supposed to have county deals before the England series. Like, um, Virat Kohli was supposed to go, but uh, he suffered an injury. But he's an exceptional case and he performed really well. Cheteshwar Pujara and uh, Ravi Chandra National, Nishan Sharma, they all had county deals, and uh, Pujara and Nishan performed admirably well. So, probably, um, Murli Vijay has now taken up a county deal, but it's probably a bit too late. He should have probably taken it up before the series. So, um, uh, it makes sense to probably put t twenties aside for a while and concentrate on county cricket before a test series, major test series if you really want to perform well and uh, there is something they can do uh, before the two countries like uh, England and New Zealand for that test series. Absolutely, uh, you know, concentrating on these overseas pitches, making sure that you've played in these environments and are able to perform over a period of time because those wickets certainly turn very differently you know they bounce differently and that's something that uh, uh, these cricketers need to understand what else is really lacking in their batting or and you know what what is that really you know pushes them back so, uh, one important thing that um, has come through in the series is the performance of the indian bowlers like uh, without the bowlers this series would have been completely lopsided at 5 nil and uh, the onus is on the batsmen to at least back up their bowlers and uh, you know, give them something to gun down. I mean, uh, so that has not happened in this series and except for Virat Kohli, none of the other Indian batsmen, except say Pujara in one innings or Shapanda Rahul in one innings, none of the others have really chipped in when it mattered. And uh, that has hurt India a lot and except at Trent Bridge when they scaled the 300 plus, they have not scored more than 
I mean, they have not scored enough runs except in the dead drop era. So that is the way. And then, and this, this is where you know captaincy and good leadership comes in. You select your best team. You make sure that they perform well, and it's just not you alone, like the top order one or two. And I think that's what's going to be very important as we move forward, showing what leadership means and how to lead the team. Thank you very much, Rohit. Great discussion. Let's continue our podcast and our video podcast. And you keep watching Democracy News Live and Crick 60's analysis of the cricket in the world.